Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd ayyul habbati fi Allah We ask Allah the Almighty for ikhlas with the bad ala sunnah the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us in everything that we're trying to do that's khair and protect us from everything that we fall into from shawr Continue on in our treaties. Hadi da'wata no aqidata. This is our da'wah and our aqidah. This is our uh, propagation or our call and our creed by Imam Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi <coughs> Rahimullah Ta'ala, where we have already discussed about the issue where the Imam said, La nara khuruj, uh, khuruj ala hukam al Muslimin. That we do not see rebelling against the Muslim authority. We do not believe in that. That's not part of our creed. And we <clears throat> mentioned the Adilla from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. And we mentioned some of the Aqwal of the Salaf of this Ummah as well, some of the statements of the Salaf, like Imam al Tahawi, Wa Abu Qilaba, and other than them. <clears throat> and I wanted to mention. A few benefits from Imam Muqbil himself from some of his other books uh, where he detailed about this issue of rebelling against the Muslim authority. Qali Imam Muqbil rahmatullahi alayhi Ida fa'ala Ida fa'ala al-hakam Ma yaqtadi kufrihi Fala yujuz an yudafa anhu Very important uh, the Imam said, he said, if the ruler does something which necessitates his disbelief, meaning that he's left the fold of Islam without, without a doubt, then it is not permissible to defend him. So that, that's imperative to also understand because a lot of the takfiris, they believe that Ahl Sunnah, that the Salafis, <coughs> Uh, defend the defend apostate rulers and defend disbelief. But as Imam Muqbil said, and, and, and what is well known qaida in the Ahl Sunnah, that we don't defend people in disbelief or in sinfulness. However, that does not necessitate making takfir or rebellion of someone. Meaning that if someone is a, a wicked sinner, but they're not a disbeliever, we don't declare them to be disbelievers. Unlike the Takfiri Khawarij uh, groups. And likewise, if someone, uh, a leader, <coughs> is outside the fold of Islam, clearly the ulama, the people who are ahlin for, for this, that they have determined or made, uh, d declared a particular ruler to be a disbeliever because of his, for example, his, his Ba'athist principles or his. Uh, whatever uh, ideology which is foreign to Islam that he upholds over the religion of Islam or for whatever other reason that they may make takfir of an individual according to the Quran and the Sunnah then <clears throat> that does not necess necess for one we don't defend those people number two that does not necessitate rebelling against them so that's very important and Imam Muqbil then, he said in another one of his treatises, he said, uh, 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 So the Imam said that we do, we do not advise with rebelling against the leaders. Even if we see open disbelief, even if you find Rather, it is not permissible except under certain conditions, the following conditions. And then he mentioned Al Awwal first, and Tukun Kotu Muslimin Mukaraba Mukaraba O Mukafa Li Kowatil Adu al Adu al Kafa. He said the first condition as far as rebelling against the ruler that is uh, become uh, open in their disbelief. It's clearly there's no, that there's no dispute with the ulama about it because they have, this particular ruler has clearly left the fold of Islam, does not rule at all by the rule of Allah 
and believes his law is better or his law is the same or the Sharia we should rule by in this day and age or whatever his case may be that has caused him to leave and do open kufr or as uh, Qaddafi had done at one point where he had had his little green book and he said take out the qul in the Quran and, and, you know, and, and showed his disbelief in the Quran in the authenticity, authenticity of the Quran uh, likewise, Saddam Hussein and his Baathist, his Baathist uh, principles, and uh, other than them. So, the Imam said that the first condition in this, in a case such as this, <clears throat> is that the strength of the Muslims is close to, or sufficient regarding the strength closely equal to the strength of their enemies from the disbelievers. That it is not like a radical disparity in, uh, in strength, in, in weaponry, and in, in, in all those other uh, training and, and what have you. That there should be something similar. Otherwise, you don't really have the ability to uh, do what is necessary uh, uh, to, to, to rebel or to to <clears throat> to overthrow that wicked disbelieving ruler that is killing and fighting the Muslims or whatever the case may be. So if you don't have the strength, you don't have the the kowa, which is even close to them. That is one. Then then you have not fulfilled that that particular condition. And then he says, and if someone says, for either for even oh for for even qal al فإن الله عز وجل يقول وعدوا لهم ما استطعتم من القوة ومن رباط الخيل ترهبون به عدو الله وعدو وعدوكم. As is mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions in Surah Al-Anfal. Uh, so if someone uses this as an argument and they say they use the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa taala says and prepare for them what you uh, what you're able to from the war horses and terrorize them or cause them cause strike fear into them and to the enemies of Allah and your enemies so if someone tries to use this as an argument to say that we're, we're even though we don't have preparation but we have done what we're able to do so we're going to fight then this is not sufficient. This is what the Imam is saying. And so then he says, Fil Jawab. So he says that how we respond to this claim of theirs is that if you do not find Mujahideen that have a high level of Iman and tr truthfulness and the determination, even a quarter of those people who the ayat was revealed, uh, if you find Mujahideen, that have Iman and that have trustworthiness or, or, or truthfulness and they have the determination at least a quarter of what of the people who this ayat was revealed about possessed then this is okay but meaning that if you have less than that if you have people who are very weak you know people who just all of a sudden they become religious and they travel across the world to to go fight as we see in the case of ISIS and other groups then this is not permissible they don't have the strength. And even I was just watching something uh, recently, which was talking about, uh, I think it was Hezbollah fighters, or it was, and, and the, the, Kurd, the Kurd fighters uh, in northern Iraq fighting against ISIS. And they were talking about how, according to them, and Allah knows best if this is true, but they were saying that some of these guys in ISIS, they were using uh, certain... Um, uh, uh, what do you call those, those drugs that that give you um, give you energy and stuff like this? Um, I forget what you call them. And anyhow, they were using these kind of things, and this kind of makes them a little out of their mind to give them the courage. Because when you think about it, a lot of these guys are young kids, young kids who you know, okay, they're in the college, they were rappers, they were boxers, they were this, they were that, but they don't have any experience to go against trained fighters. Those Hezbollah, Shia, Rafida are battle-worn battle fighters, 
They're not, it's not easy. Those guys know how to fight. They train. They're supported by Iran. They have the money. They have the weapons. And they have the experience. So meaning that those guys are not uh, experienced fighters going up against them. A lot of times they're young kids. Young kids who, who are idealists and they go. And that's not sufficient for winning uh, wars and battles. And, and likewise, so then you see the harm that it causes as a, uh, high casualties for them fighting against battle-hard people, even if they have some uh, level of Iman with them. But again, if you're not prepared, you don't have the Qawwa, then you're unable to fulfill that act of Ibadah. The second thing the Imam mentioned is that the ones striving to remove the disbelieving leader also should possess this characteristic of that they do not require the support and assistance from a non-Muslim land or from the UN or from any other disbelieving uh, Kafir uh, agents or agencies to help them be successful because they obviously are not there for the benefit of the Muslims and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and the Shaykh mentioned وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّةٌ that the Jews and the Christians will not never be pleased with you until you follow their religion. They'll never be pleased with you. So this, and, and then the Sheikh said, وَعَمَلَهُمْ فِي حَمَّاهُ وَأَفْغَانَسَانْ وَصُمَالْ أَكْبَرْ شَاهِدْ So he said and that the, the, uh, the clearest cases of this is what happened in Afghanistan and Somalia that uh, they didn't have that and they used, uh, you know, cooperated with disbelievers in order to do whatever they want and they ended up fighting and killing one another and harming one another and it wasn't for the benefit of the believers. And the third condition the Sheikh mentioned, Rahmatullah he said, is that the Muslims are safe from uh, basically that it has the maslaha that there is not going to be a greater harm than there is benefit in doing so by safeguarding the blood of the Muslims that they won't go to fighting one another that there has to be uh, guidance and direction and spiritual training as well for the Muslims so that they know how to deal in these situations of jihad fisabilillah that they are, don't go to uh, killing and slaughtering one another and fighting for his be and fighting for other causes, but rather that they cooperate together and that they are not corrupted and they should be safe from being corrupted to breaking down and fighting one another. And he mentioned that the Prophet wasallam that that was from his minhaj, that he trained his sahaba, that he received revelation from his Lord after they had had the tarbiyah, they had had the proper training uh, in iman and learned their religion before they were given permissive, uh, a permission to fight, that their iman was cultivated, that they were cultivated as a community. To, uh, and then he also mentioned, the sheikh also mentioned along with this, he says, well, la, la bud, al jihad wa fi al jihad an yustafta al ulama." This is very important, and this is shows you what the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, the the Salafi ulama of this day, especially they emphasize this is that it is an, a necessity that before going for jihad fi and during jihad fi is that the people seek the guidance of the major scholars, those ulama that are rasikhun fil ilm. Not just anyone who's in your community, some guy who's a dai in your community, some guy you met on the internet, some guy you're impressed with on the internet, on the YouTube, or whatever the case may be, and he gives you a fatwa, or any other jokester and trickster and charlatan that's going to deceive the Muslims and cause them to be a source of fitna and spreading blood. That's not permissible. So the Shaykh mentioned those conditions to help safeguard 
and show that the Quran and the Sunnah and the minhaj of the of Ahlul Sunnah is safeguarding the Muslims and not being hasty in uh, spilling blood because spilling blood is is something uh, very uh, it's a sacred thing and it is something uh, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala does not. Uh, is not pleased with people just spilling blood of people who you have no right to spill their blood. So these are very serious issues. The issue of rebelling against the, the Muslim leader and the issue of of fighting and, and so forth. And it is legislated in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So that means it's dictated, it's in accordance with what has been legislated, that you have to follow the rules that are based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, not based upon Abu Hamza Misri, not based upon Al-Qaeda, not based upon Osama bin Laden, not based upon Zarqawi, not based upon Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, not based upon uh, Abu, Abu Muhammad al-Maqdisi, not based upon Asuri, not based upon any of these guys who give fatwa or Abu Qatada uh, give fatwa to go here and go there and do this and do that and, and kill these people and blow up these people and put bombs here and put bombs on yourself. Absolutely not. Islam uh, is free from this wicked ideology and I fear for those people who've made these types of fatwa how they're going to be raised up amongst their Lord and all the people they misguided with that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be a source of guidance and not misguidance. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.